Okay, once again, sorry. Um, we're just having to work quite together with my colleague to make sure everything is going smoothly. Um, so welcome to the, the panel today. This is specifically for computer science departments. So we have tried getting some um, employers and previous alumni on board with us today to share the experience and some useful tips for you today. So uh, if you have any questions, please do type in the chat and we'll try to answer them in our Q&A session later on. Can I please ask um, Gaia to start because she's coming up on my screen first. So if you could please introduce yourself and we'll start the panel now. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Brian. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. And thank you, everyone, for joining. My name is Gaia Caruso. I am head of diversity and inclusion for a wonderful tech company called Sparta Global, has courses in London. Um, so in terms of my background and what I do, I'll start from there. Um, I do not have a technical degree whatsoever. I have two degrees in history. I absolutely loved studying history at university. Never thought that I would work in tech, um, but absolutely fell in love with a digital role. So in terms of what I do at the moment as a DNI manager at Sparta Global, I am in charge of our equal opportunities agenda for all digital roles at Sparta Global. I and mean, it's an incredibly interesting job because I really believe that technology must be inclusive for companies to be able to put together products that will help us shape a better future as a society. So I do a lot of work to encourage more women in the technical sector, a lot of work to encourage more students from unrepresented or underprivileged backgrounds into technology, and a lot of work to shape our company culture in a way where everyone is welcome and everyone can thrive at work. So that's my background and, and what I do. Um, did you have any specific questions that, that you would like that you would like me to, to address? If you don't actually if you don't mind me asking, would it be right if I ask what Yo. your title is? I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Simba, could you please repeat that? Simba, um, don't repeat it. May I know what your specific title is? Like your employment title? Just asking. Diversity and Inclusion Manager for Sparta Global, which is a tech company. All right, thank you. Sorry, I was just No just worries. Thinking. No worries. Arabia, did you have any questions that you would like me to ask? To address? No, so. Um, I think we'll just go around, do some introductions with others as well. Okay. And then right at the end, we'll go through some questions and answers with all the panel together. Thank you, Gaia. Can I ask uh, Matthew to introduce himself as well now, please? Matthew uh, is currently working as a software engineer and has also graduated from Middlesex University. So I'll hand over to you, Matthew. Yeah. Hello. Can everyone hear me? Can I just get a confirmation? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Brilliant. All right, so my name is Matthew. I'm a software engineer at X for Nova Context. Uh, who am I? I graduated from Middlesex about five, six years ago from a computer networks degree. And later on, I taught a couple of years at Middlesex as a graduate academic assistant. Uh, followed by graduating from a master's degree in machine learning. And then I went over to work as a software engineer uh, here at Exfontology right now. Um, just looking at the email that Robert sent, uh, what I'm currently doing, like I said, I work as a software engineer. Uh, most of my duties are around uh, writing software, developing new features for our platform. Um, what else is there? Uh, and, Education experience computer field. Well, graduated from uh, IT. If, uh, if uh, opportunities available at this point, we don't have any opportunities available. We just hired our very first intern uh, back in August, so that would be great. That that's great to have a new student and teaching him right now for for the next twelve months and seeing him how he develops. Uh, 
Rabia, do you want me to go through the tips or do you want to leave that for later on? Uh, I think we can maybe share the tips later on from all of you. So from, yeah, from the panel. Sure. Okay. So I'll leave that for, for later on. Yeah. Thank um, you. Do you want me to answer some of the questions in the chat or should I leave that later on as well? Uh, if you can see them now, you can answer them. Uh, yeah. How many years after graduating did you land your first job? Uh, I started my job as a GAA straight after my graduation. So that was like six months before that I did a few jobs here and now at Millsex. And the name of my course was uh, Computer Networks. That was a couple of years ago. I'm not sure if they're still doing that course. Probably do. But yeah, that's about it. Uh, Thank what you. Kind of programming? Okay, guys, I'll, I'll leave. I'll let the others talk. Uh, put some questions. Yeah, I think what, what we'll do is we'll go around. I'll ask all the, the panel, the presenters, to give a useful tip to the students. And then all the questions coming through, we'll, st we'll start answering them at the end in our Q&A session. Yeah? Thank sure. you, Matthew. Right. Can I ask uh, Jordan to unmute himself and please introduce yourself to everyone? Yeah, no worries. You can hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Lovely. So, hi guys. Uh, my name is Jordan Taransky, and um, I'm also a MDX graduate. Um, I studied information technology, so a really broad IT course, um, and I graduated back in summer uh, 2016. Um, before I graduated, whilst I was at Middlesex, um, I did a 12-month industrial work placement as well. Um, that was at O2, and um, if there are any students which are um, currently kind of um, or just finished their second year I would definitely recommend looking for internships because they'll definitely help you. they'll definitely help you get some experience um, for, for later down the line as well um, and then after university or, or during my third year um, I applied to um, a lot of graduate programs as well and um, uh, joined Microsoft uh, a couple of months just after graduating and I've now been at Microsoft for four years, um, working as a customer engineer. So I'm a, a technical engineer that works with Office 365. But I'm customer facing, so I go out to um, different organizations um, around the UK and around Europe and basically help them um, roll out Office 365 um, to their staff. That's kind of a little bit about me. Um, in terms of opportunities at Microsoft, um, we hire in the UK roughly between 30 interns and 30 graduates every year. Um, and most of the applications for these schemes go live mid-September. So if you're on this call today, um, end of August, um, it's a good time to be aware of this because um, start to mid-September is exactly when um, you'll be able to take a look online. And the applications close generally in October for graduates and December um, for internships. So uh, make sure you kind of get your uh, applications in before the close date. And in terms of finding them, um, I've just put a link in the chat window. Um, but for anyone that can't see the chat, it's microsoft.com slash university. Um, that's basically the early in careers website that Microsoft has. Um, you select the country you're looking for. Um, and it will show you the roles available. As I said, it won't show any roles available yet, but please kind of check back um, generally mid-September um, and, and those roles will basic roles will be listed there. Thank you, Jordan. That was really useful. Um, can I ask um, Christina to introduce herself, please, to everyone? Sure. I actually have a few slides. I'm going to try to use echo. Does everyone hear an echo from me? Um, I can hear you. Fine. Uh, I think you're muted now, Christina. How about now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Um, is it possible for me to show, because it says disabled right now, share screen, um, show my presentation? Um, I believe Clemente should be able to let you share yeah, your screen. Yeah. It's, I actually dialed in from two places. Should be the Christina's chance. 
bracket laptop. Um, that's where I'd like to share the screen, please. <laughs> Technology fun. I can start talking. Um, uh, yeah, just one second. Okay. Okay, for some reason it's not working. I'm really sorry for all the, the technical issues today. Um, maybe I can share your presentation with the students afterwards in the email. Sure, okay. So I was just trying to make it a little bit more fun rather than just me talking very dryly. Um, that's why, so my, so my name is Christina Chen. I am from Turing Talent. I'm one of the founders and the CEO. Um, I'll talk a little bit about my background and what, what I what you and talent does, and also my personal career in the technology sector. So I studied computer science. Oh, I think I've got, I've got to. perfect. Thank you, whoever did that. Um, can you all see my screen now? Yeah. Okay, I think. Yeah. I see some nodding. I'm just gonna, let me just make this big. Um, Detective, you graphics, comedy. Okay, this is the first time I see this message. Okay, so um, I, I had um, my background. So I studied computer science. I was also at Microsoft, uh, Jordan, but way earlier than you. And I worked on the Windows products. Um, so some of the photo editors and, and anything in the sort of Windows suite. Um, um, but then I had about 10 years of uh, experience in the technology sector. I'd stay on the business side at Cool. Um, so investment and finance, um, invested in 20, more than 20 companies from uh, at different stages from a man with an idea, <laughs> entrepreneur with an idea, with a PowerPoint, nothing yet, to companies that um, are you know, a few hundred um, employees listed. Um, on the public market. So I've seen quite a range. And um, touring talent is actually a passion uh, of mine, just really uh, sometimes I joke about building touring talent for my younger self, having been a technical graduate myself and going to the technology industry, I always felt that there is a lot that can be done to bridge the gap between education and industry. So Turing Talent was born and um, the three programs uh, we run. Um, graduate uh, talk, so there's a lot more information on the website, so I won't take up all the time here, so I just fly through this. Graduate program, so that's for anyone who's graduated uh, full-time positions. Internship program, that's more for summer or placement years. And then we also, next month, uh, launching the data uh, analyst specialized program. So it's a specific track for anybody uh, who wants to go into the data analytics field. And um, these are programs that are different from um, a job in the way that these are more than a job with training, with mentorship, and with peer network as well. This is you know, what I was talking about as a, so someone who had gone through this career myself, I felt like um, there's more, if there was more training and one-on-one -on -one mentorship as the early stage of your career can really set you up for success in the long run. So all these programs come with formal uh, training, uh, different durations, depending on your track, one-on-one -on -one mentors with seniors and peer network. This is something that you know a big company like Microsoft would be able to offer, but a lot of companies wouldn't be. So we aggregate all that. So by applying to this program, you already got that, all that benefit and obviously the job. Um, uh, the various jobs as well. Uh, just very quickly, again, you can see this on our website. We have uh, more than 4,000 um, people who have applied. Um, I really want to echo what Gaia was saying at the very, very beginning. Um, personally, I'm very, just, uh, very passionate about diversity in technology as well, because I think that's really what, what uh, makes teams and companies more creative um, and successful in the long run. Um, being a minority, I guess, in tech uh, myself, uh, we're very keen uh, and um, proud to have uh, attracted different applicants from different backgrounds, 35% um, women, about 60% of minority uh, ethnicity, different um, university economic background, etc. 
one um, one stat that's not on here, which may be relevant for some of you, is that um, we do have quite a skew towards postgraduates. So I'd say more than half are masters and PhDs because of some of the positions that we have are, are, are quite specialized. Um, so back to the programs, um, they t tend to be uh, not only in software engineering, but there's a uh, quite a lot in machine learning, uh, data science, um, uh, big areas in cybersecurity is another big one for us. If you go on our website, we have about 100 companies right now uh, who are active, uh, actively hiring these fields. Um, just qu very quickly, again, just make it a bit more visual for everyone who we are. You can see some big names on here. You know, so this is how the people came together around this is when we talked about this gap between education and industry, we wanted to build sort of a program that really helps people who graduate with all that mentoring, all that training support, all that peer networks support, bring that beyond just the big companies like Facebook, Google, obviously they have a lot of that. Um, so we want to make it more uh, accessible for everyone, hence the Tune Town program. So that's really about us. Um, you can follow us where all the, all the social media channels, um, various updates. So that's it for me. Thank you, Christina. Again, very useful and good insight. Um, I think we have Maron with us as well. Can I ask Maron to introduce himself? And please, can you share your video? Hi there. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm Maron Joya, and um, I've graduated this year actually in computer science at Middlesex University. Uh, whilst working at Middle, uh, while studying in Middles Middlesex University, I actually worked as a web developer. I did an internship with uh, Middlesex Student Union. I did that for about um, three months, three to four months, and then I moved on to doing an industrial placement at. Um, I did an industrial placement at uh, BAE Systems, and, um, and um, then I've come. I came back and graduated, and now I'm just doing some freelancing at the moment. So just picking up projects um, that I can find on different platforms for freelancing, doing web design, graphic design, and also apps. And um, yeah, that's. I don't know if anyone has questions. Basically, I've just graduated, so I'm still new to. To, to the world of computer science, I guess. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Maron. Um, yeah, I, I know you only just graduated this year and I remember we yeah. worked together quite closely for your internship and placement year. Um, so uh, now is the chance for everyone. I know there was loads of questions floating in between while we were all talking. Uh, if you have a question specific for a presenter, can you please write down their name and next to the name you can write down your question. Otherwise we will just think it's a general question for anyone. So. Could you please ask your questions now? I think we've got one. Have you struggled to find a job? I, I guess this is for Maron. Yeah, um, I, now, technically, I've just graduated. Um, I haven't. I've actually seen quite a rise in a lot of new jobs. Um, I've been getting a lot of LinkedIn uh, messages for people who, recruiters, uh, who've got a lot of different jobs for people who've uh, graduated in computer science. So I don't think it's actually quite hard to find a job at the moment. Um, yeah, so I think, so when did you do the three months web development? I did that during my second year. I did my three months web development internship during my second year at computer science. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, I think for Jordan, what is the best time to apply in Microsoft graduate program? Yep, so all the applications open normally around mid-September and uh, you can check on that link that I posted earlier, uh, microsoft.com slash university, and uh, just make sure you get the applications in um, before they close, generally uh, October for graduates and December for interns, but the, the earlier the better, really. Yeah, I think we, we do try to tell our students that um, they try to sometimes leave a bit towards the last minute uh, into the next, uh, you know, the, the, towards the end of the academic year, so it's, it's better to start the process earlier. Most of the, the companies, they do close their deadline by end of the year. So, for example, if you're starting your second in October now, um, you should really start getting your applications ready and we are here to help you with your CVs. So please do start looking uh, earlier on. 
um, to anyone, doesn't matter if you gain experience in second year or after completing your degree. Um, so I, I guess I can answer that as well. Uh, yeah. you, um, normally the, the placements, so a year long uh, industrial placement or three months internships is for penultimate year students. So that means between your second and third year. I don't think we have many options after final year. After final year, it's more of a graduate schemes, which is normally for two years. So I know I've got some employers on board today as well. Um, they'll tell you the same thing. So the companies would be offering two years graduate programs. So if, I, I can also, also help to answer this, uh, if it yes. helps, because we do see both sides. Um, I guess quite special about us is we do see hundreds of uh, companies and also thousands of applicants. And we actually looked at what makes we looked at the data of what makes people successful in their um, in their sort of job hunting uh, process. Is that experience? You know, Jordan was talking about internship experience. To go and get that. Um, it doesn't matter when you've done it. Obviously, if there's placement year, that is more that is better. We have seen that there are, you know, for example, there are people who have done maybe an internship quite early on uh, summer, let's say after first year even. Um, quite a common second year, maybe as a web developer, software engineer, whatever. And then after they graduate or after third year, depending on whether they go on a master and all that, they may do a more specialized one, maybe machine learning, et cetera. So that helps them before even getting to the full-time position, uh, sort of job, <laughs> they already sort of progress in their um, specialization, I guess. If that's what you're thinking about, that could be something, but otherwise, um, I think both are welcome and experience is welcome. Fabio, Thank can you. I jump in as well very quickly? Um, I think yeah. we have a question for Sparta Global. And also, I was the first one to go, so I actually only introduced myself. Um, didn't really talk much about, um, about Sparta. But I had a question before asking for um, uh, roles currently available mm -hmm. and also timing. So can I start by saying really directly, I have worked um, with Middlesex University for over three years. I absolutely love taking people on board from your degree course. I think it's a wonderful course. Um, I'm also aware we are in a crisis at the moment and the circumstances are really, really strange for everyone. There is a lot of uncertainty. Um, if I can be completely honest and direct with everyone on the call, um, my biggest suggestion at the moment is to be as proactive as you possibly can in reaching out to employers. I speak for myself when I say that we have 30 roles available as we speak for recent graduates from Middlesex University as junior developers. We are looking for people with an understanding of coding to join in a, uh, in a junior technical role across multiple coding languages. It doesn't really matter which coding language you are an expert on at the moment. You do not have to be an expert at all, actually. Um, but it's a very solid graduate scheme. It's a two years graduate scheme. I heard a question before. It's going to give you an opportunity to grow in a technical role, but also work across a wide diversity of projects and business scenario. So in terms of timing, I think we had a question on timing as well. We are recruiting as we speak. And we're actually doing interviews at the moment. So if I can just, you know, really encourage anyone on the call to get in touch after today via LinkedIn, via email, through the career services, even just to ask a quick question. It could be your gateway into, into a great technical career as we are recruiting as we speak. Um, so this is for Sparta Global, uh, New Orleans, Sparta Global. So it's a technical consulting organization based in London. Okay, thank you guys, that was really useful. Uh, we have previously done a session with Sparta Global as well, and hopefully we can do another one, even if not on campus, like an online session, uh, just to again introduce the company and go through the, the, the graduate scheme available for students to apply for. And Guy again can go through the actual application process with you all. So we'll, we'll keep that for like a separate session with the employer. Um, I think we had few questions in between. <laughs> uh, what is the best time to apply in Microsoft Graduate Program for Jordan? I think that was answered. Yeah, I answered that before. So around mid September, they open. Okay, thank you. I think it's been repetition. Um, 
I think it was females. What can we do to stand up from the crowd when applying to a Microsoft uh, software engineering graduating scheme? Um, really, any, any type of experience helps. So if you've been able to work on any projects, you have any side projects you've work, worked on, you've helped any friends or family do any kind of work, that would be great. Um, having any uh, online trainings or online certifications that you've completed, um, you just kind of really need to come to the interview with something to talk about. If you if you sit there and, and shrug your shoulders, you, you're not going to get very far. But if you go to the interview, you seem passionate, you talk about what you've worked on, what you've learnt. Um, it doesn't have to be the greatest project. You don't have to say that you've rolled out a service to two million people. It could just be that you built your uncle a website and they're going to love to hear that type of thing. Thanks, Jordan. I, I think there's one for Jordan. Gaia and Christina. Um, so just go through one by one as Jordan's already speaking. When we are applying for an internship or placement year, what are the skills your organization is looking for? You kind of have answered already. What are you expecting interns to be aware of? Is it platform specific or subject specific or anything else? Um, I think Jordan has kind of gone through the details. Uh, Gaia, can I ask maybe you? Yeah, absolutely. So my answer is probably going to be unexpected. Um, I know you're studying a, a technical course, you're studying computer science, and I will say that for our application process, an understanding of coding, having a degree in computer science is important. I will, however, say it is not the most important uh, aspect that we are looking for. What we are really looking for is a combination of communication skills, problem solving, and empathy when working in groups. So I think the hard skills can be taught through technical training, which we do provide as part of our course. I think, however, that being able to work with other people, to collaborate with other people, to build products together, it's far more important to display during an interview. So when I interview, for example, I really listen to the examples that you're providing. If, for example, you're telling me that, yes, you've got a degree in computer science, but if you're also able to explain what you've done within the context of a group project, how you've worked with others, whether you've, you know, you've faced difficulties in your life, how you overcame problems, you know, if you're able to really provide examples that go to show how you work in difficult situations and how you work with others, that is going to really, really make a difference. You also want to think, and I think this is true for, you know, possibly every company, not just part of global. I think, you know, there is a lot of competition when it comes to technical abilities. However, if you combine your technical abilities with explaining why you're passionate about technology, what you want to achieve with technology, how do you want to change the world through technology, that is really going to resonate with most most employers. That's my biggest piece of, piece of advice, really, in terms of skills and things we look for. Yeah. Thanks, Gaia. Um, when I have my one-to-one -one sessions with all the, the students and the meetings, I, I think one of the, the biggest suggestions I give is also quite similar, that make sure you are able to give examples. It can be from your studies, so different you know modules you are studying, any projects that you work on, any teamwork, any presentations you have delivered. Make sure when you go to your interviews or writing your applications, you are able to provide examples. So there's some context to it. Um, uh, well, Karen, Christina, so I think uh, this question was also for you as well, Christina. When applying for internship placement, uh, what are the skills that your organisation looks for and the, the expecting intents to be aware of? Yeah, I can only just second guess, uh, sorry, um, second what Gaia was saying, definitely on the soft skill side and examples are, are great. One very just practical tip for everyone here is for all your CVs, I'd suggest you definitely have a section called projects. Um, and that would include some of what Gaia was talking about, any work group work, personal work, hobbies, Jordan was talking about building a website for your uncle all of that because you're looking you're looking for i assume a career in tech <laughs> since you're here um definitely talk about that any links to github if you build that um would be helpful um quite often we have seen cvs where it's just a list of courses um any tech, sort of practical things you've done as much as possible um we do have a whole actually resume, ultimate resume guide. Uh, it's free. It's on the website. It's on Instagram. You can see, look at that. We've actually done quite a lot of work just to suggest what's 
just suggest what are the best sections to have. You have a look at that. So it's a thank you. Thank you, Christine. I think there's a few more for you. Uh, for the internship experience with Turing Talent, is there any application fee? There is an application fee. So for the internship program, there's an application, uh, application fee for the graduate program. It's completely free. In the internship program, the, the fee is £500. Um, having said that, during the pandemic, we are giving scholarships to everyone who applies right now. So not necessarily full, but so either partial or full scholarship. So you won't pay the 500. And actually through just the summer cohort that's, you know, we have about 20 people now. Um, more than half have their fees sponsored by the, the company actually. So uh, there are very few who are actually um, Right, Christine, I think there's another one for you. Where is Turing Talent Base and would it be possible if I apply for three months internship uh, now uh, but to start yeah. working after April? Yes, so um, there are a few questions here. So we are based in London but actually a lot, if you look online, a lot of our internships, especially our remote internships in the US. Sorry, someone's talking in the background. Um, can so I have, every, sorry, can I ask everyone to mute themselves please, except for Sina. So, um, just make it clear. So we're based in London, but really, for our, you're not going to work here. Well, I'm in my my living room right now. But um, given the situation, so most of this will be remote work. Um, there are UK-based, obviously, graduate positions, um, but there are also positions which are remote, especially for placement years and internships. You may want to look at that. There are New York-based companies, Silicon Valley-based companies, obviously London-based companies, UK companies as well. Um, in terms of timing, because someone was asking, can they apply for April? Yes, you can. Uh, we have on the form, you can indicate that we take applications all year round. <laughs> You're welcome. I think there was a question about um, experience, personal experience before getting the first long term job. So I'm just... Yeah, I think there's one for Matthew and Christina. What work experience did you have before your first long term jobs and did you do placement? So, can I maybe ask Matthew to go first? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah so when I was studying, I did work as a SLA at Middlesex. I did a couple of jobs as uh, uh, one of the helpful students that did, I think it was the, one of the roles at Middlesex that you work with marketing during the open days. And during uh, my second third year, I did work as at Blackberry as a NOC operator. That was related closely to my networking background and uh, before the long term. And then, like I said, I did work as a GAA, as a graduate academy assistant during the, uh, after graduating at the same time as I did my master's degree. Thank you, Matthew. Christina, I think that was that's so, the question. Yeah, I actually had two internships beforehand. So one was, um, so the first one was, Basically, the IT support role was, you know, going around, uh, they had clients, it could be fixing their printer, <laughs> anything from fixing their printer to they had some, you know, um, sort of enterprise access issue for their software, whatever it is, or installation issue. Um, so that was, uh, I was really just shadowing. I think the first one's really just more like a shadowing rather than internship. Oh. I wasn't so technical then either as my first one, but I learned quite a lot. And that first one got me to the second one, which was uh, internship by Sun Microsystems. It was a little bit more technical. It's not as technical as my sort of Microsoft one. Um, it was more sort of system admin kind of work, again, sort of setting admin control um, for sort of enterprise grade systems. Um, that's what I was saying is any kind of work shadowing, you, whatever you call it, placement, internships, even if it's not the ultimate job you want to do, you probably don't want to, um, you, you may want, not want to be IT support for the rest of your life, but as a starting point, it's always good, and then that builds up, uh, that's kind of how I got to where I am. Thank you, Christina. Uh, I think that, the, sorry, the, the question is that for Gaia, you said course, how much does it cost? 
Yes, I saw that. Um, so no, we are we have jobs available. Um, so this is a job. It's not um, it's it, it's not a course. Um, I think I said that I recruited people from your university course, from your degree course. But what I'm recruiting for, it's a job at the moment. Um, so we have 30 junior developers and um, roles currently available for our application. If I can also quickly answer, Rabia, a question that I just saw. Is it better to go for an internship or for a full-time, you know, paid mm -hmm. role? Which yeah. I think it's a, it's a great question. My honest, genuine advice is go for whatever is better for you in terms of training. Invest in your training. Find a company that genuinely, genuinely, authentically cares about building up your profile as an individual by training you, by teaching you what really matters in the industry. Sometimes it's really different what we you know, learn at university as opposed to how we actually work in digital. We find a company that is really ready to invest in your professional profile through training. Whether that's an internship or a full-time role, it really depends on the company. But I would say be very selfish in choosing the company that will invest in you because if they do so you're going to be presented with a long-term career as opposed to just a job and it's going to be a long-term journey during which you will grow as opposed to just a full-time job okay thanks Gaia thanks a lot um another question is is it common for interns or students on placements to learn the coding language on the job as opposed to already having experience in that language. I think maybe uh, because Mathiana has recruited someone recently from our university and also Meran also went himself for, you know, in the computing role. So maybe you two would be able to answer these questions. Yeah, sure. Um, so what was the question going? Is it common for in terms of students on placements to learn the coding language on the job as opposed to already having experience in that language? Uh, so in our case, uh, part of the interview process was a coding exercise uh, of your chosen language. So yeah, you would need to have some sort of experience, prior experience with software engineering. Uh, if you did a course at Middlesex, I think of the science and software engineering, one of the modules, a lot of modules at Middlesex do include a programming experience prior to going to a third year. So, any sort of experience, program experience from, from university would help you to get a placement uh, in, in our organization. I'm not sure about the others, but in our case, that be, that's quite beneficial to know uh, at least some aspects of it so you can exp explain how the program will work and uh, what's the progress or process of writing the good, good code. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think I would like to add something to that. So um, when you, for example, if you are applying, it's really important to know what your strengths are so you're applying in that kind of field so if you are you know you think you believe you are quite good at programming or this is something you like to pursue in and you may think that you know somewhere I'm not you know great at it just yet it's fine you're still student so you know I don't think employers are expecting you to be on the very top level with all the experiences just yet but like um, you know um, I think Christina said before so having like a project section on your CV is really important so any small project that you're working on any programming languages you've done and if you're applying for a role in that specific area even just you know watching some tutorials and having yourself uh, enrolled on like an online course those kind of things will work in your favor just having some kind of knowledge in that in that field even if you don't have practical experience so because you are going out to gain that practical experience um, I think for Christina do you have any graduate schemes specifically for ITIL or Cisco certifications Honestly speaking, not right now. We did have um, quite a big um, hiring for Cisco themselves last year. Um, and obviously, they they will be will be very relevant. What we're talking about right now, I would need to look at your application specifically. Um, from top of my head, actually, so unfortunately, sorry. Thank you. Um, I think Gaia has already asked, answered one. Uh, Jordan, may you tell us more about the graduate program you went through? Yes, yeah, so um, the graduate program at Microsoft works a little bit different to some companies. Um, essentially, it's a full-time job offer. So 
many graduate programs are two years and at the end of the two years um, you need to kind of find a space for you to move to and quite often that's successful but sometimes not um, with Microsoft it is it's called a graduate program but it is a full-time job you get a permanent contract um, you get placed into a team that best fits your interests or your skills um, so I was quite interested in the kind of uh, unified communication space that's like um, video calls, the whole Zoom teams, everything that's very, very popular at the minute. So I got to work with um, Skype for Business and now work with Teams. And essentially you get trained up by the team that you're a part of. So there'll be some generic training at the start for all of the graduates just to get you in, integrated into the business as a whole. And then you, over time your, your kind of training gets more and more specific to your job role until you are basically trained up with the team that you work with day to day. And then I would say roughly after about 12 months, I was then actually delivering to customers on my own. So it was kind of a, a 12 month ramp up from um, initial hire to becoming um, a, a full-time engineer. Thanks, Jordan. Uh, I think there's one, is it a bad idea if you go for apprenticeship after your degree rather than internship? Um, I'm going to open that to employers from their perspective. So any, anyone can answer really. I think any experience is good experience. Um, uh, again, echo what was said earlier, choose the experience that you think is going to benefit you the most at the end of the day. Um, and I, th I think if you are a graduate, then it might be easier to get into a graduate scheme and that might then lead um, more into a career rather than an, uh, rather than an apprenticeship that might just be a temporary experience. Thanks, Jordan. The next one I can probably uh, answer from a uh, university perspective. Is there any internship opportunity for students who don't have placement modules? So uh, at Middlesex University, uh, most, I'll say probably all of them, uh, the courses do have a placement module that you can opt for. So um, it's, it's an optional one. So most of the ones in the computer science department is a year long option. We don't have three months internship uh, placement module option just yet. Um, so what that really means is that we're not stopping you from going out to gain, you know, shorter uh, period of experience. The year long means minimum at least nine months is something you'll be credited for. So you actually have an industrial placement written on your degree. Whereas if you chose to do something, uh, you know, a shorter period, it may not be on your degree. However, it will be a great, uh, you know, useful experience for you to put on your CV and applications in the future. So any experience like that already will be really useful. So that, that, that's the only kind of difference for the placement module. Um, do you have any recommendations, tips for international students after completing masters in data science, as there are less opportunities for international students? I think we did run uh, during our event, like a campaign where we had student circus on board with us. They do advertise opportunities specifically for international students with uh, companies that do provide sponsorships. I know the government website also has a list. It's a, it's a very long list that you can actually um, search through. Um, of all the companies that have license to provide sponsorship. But I, I think in that case, you will need to be a little bit more proactive rather than just using uh, typical classic methods where you're just looking online and just, you know, searching and applying. You probably will have to look for those specific companies that do have sponsor sponsorship license and then making a one-to-one -one contact through either LinkedIn, emailing or calling them. Um, is there any tips maybe from our employers today? Are, are, are any of you recruiting with the sponsorships or...? We do, have, we do sponsor, Pure Talent is a sponsorship organization. Okay, that's the good news. <laughs> I used to be an international student myself, I know exactly. Uh, I think, is it Kinza who asked that question? It is, is a lot harder. Um, quite often the employers um, would, I mean, just speaking from my personal experience, not about Pure Talent, um, they would like to have seen you work in a, any sort of, relevant setup before, I think maybe they would take a bigger risk or more sort of more opportunities for uh, home students uh, if there were less uh, prior experience. So it just for international students, just the heart is unfortunately higher. You do need some sort of internship or placement experience before. So that's my personal experience. I can't speak well. Thank you. I think uh, Mehran already sent a link for the, the websites for practicing interview coding questions. So thank you for that. Um, we have two more. I think after these two questions, we will close the, the discussions. And 
we will end by you know each employee just giving a, a useful tip to just end on a, on a positive good note so for panel any applicant uh, how important is it that an applicant has done a placement year what am i trying to understand is it worth it to add an additional year to my graduate degree i think along the lines this question has been answered during the session today that any experience is useful uh, you know if you do have a year long experience or you have three months any even two weeks or you know is doing extracurricular activities re relevant to your course or the field that you would like to pursue your career in uh, would be really useful on your uh, you know applications because you have to remember especially during the current times uh, uh, the situation is quite tricky so you know having something uh, extra on your cv would be really really great for the employers to look into uh, what criteria do you have to describe a good project? Can I maybe get one of the employers to anyone? Uh, well, if you can talk about this project for at least 20 minutes and then get me to ask you multiple questions about it so that I can find out more about your knowledge and experience from project. That's the sort of project that should be on your CV and I should be able to see I did this for that purpose. So anything that brings a conversation into an interview, that's a good project. Thanks, Matthew. Um, I, I think Simba asked, may we have the contact info? Can you please just let me, uh, do you mean the presenters or whose contact info are you looking for? Okay, this will be last one now before we end. Is it worth doing like an admin role for the experience, then apply for a full time, more IT based role? So, from one of the employers, from your perspective, would you? Do you... I think it's probably from because of my, uh, I don't know, it may have been because of my personal experience I shared. I did start with more of a support admin system admin role. If, if I can build upon that, maybe if that's okay. I think it's a great question, actually. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think any experience is better than no experience to begin with. Um, mm -hmm. But I also think, you know, try to make your experience relevant if you can, or uh, as relevant as possible. Um, but I also do want to say, I very often work with recent graduates who do not have any big fancy internship or placement on their CV. And I think sometimes we forget, um, you know, that's a question of social mobility too. Um, you know, sometimes I work with candidates who do not have parents in professional, you know, positions or parents who can really provide them with the structure of support and mentorship to actually go for those placements and internships that look so great on a CV. So if you find yourself in a position where you actually you're struggling to access this internship and access this project. I think you can still present your experience of any kind in a very, very valuable manner. And if I can give just one very quick example, I had an interview the other day with a with recent Brian. graduate in computer science who did not have any internship or any placement experience. Um, who did not have a family who could support from a mentorship point of view. And um, he was very concerned that not having that sort of you know, placement experience on his CV would really represent a problem. Um, he was working as a chef part time to pay his way through university. So instead, he used an example from his work as a chef. And he explained to me as a recruiter, he was basically explaining how his work as a chef had in fact prepared him to work in a high pressure organization in a very dynamic organization he told me how you know difficult and complex and sophisticated it can be to prepare different dishes at different times to make sure that they all reach the table at the same time it was a great example and it wasn't related at all to an internship in computer science but we liked it so much and it displayed such a good understanding of the qualities that i've talked about earlier collaboration, working with others, listening to others, being able to work in a high pressure environment, that it really, really impressed us. We actually chose that person against someone who had a very, very good placement on his CV, but did not display the same enthusiasm on an interview. 
So just an example there, which hopefully goes to show you can sell your, your experience in a very valuable way, even if it's not a big fancy placement, even if you don't have an opportunity to go for one of those internships. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Thank you, Guy. Um, I think uh, yeah, someone said, is it being recorded? Yes, we have tried recording this. Hopefully um, it should be saved so for you to watch later. Um, the rest of the, I think uh, Simba asked for presenters details. If obviously if the presenters are happy to share their, um, you know, a, a email address or contact, could you please just share in the chat with everyone? If not, can you, for the students, you can send me your questions or queries and I can forward to the relevant um, presenters. And um, I think if there's any more questions, like I said, you can ask directly here or, you know, send me later on. We have gone kind of over the time. I know we started a bit late as well, but um, can I ask maybe just go around and ask each uh, employer to just give a useful tip to end today's session, please. So we'll start with Gaia again. <laughs> And then sure. we'll just go around. It's just because you're coming up on my screen as first. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. No, it's fine. Um, so I would say, um, I would say be courageous and hopeful. Though I understand we are in the middle of a crisis and there is a lot of uncertainty at the moment, be courageous and come forward. Be proactive as much as possible. I, as we speak, have some of you on LinkedIn who are already messaging yeah. me. And that, that's wonderful. Um, because I'll call you tomorrow, we'll have a chat, and that could be the beginning of your application. Be proactive, do not wait, come forward, even if it's just for a question, and it can be as easy as that. That's my biggest recommendation for today. Thank you, Gaia. Uh, next, Jordan, please. Yep, so two things. Um, first of all, uh, only apply if you're passionate. Um, if you're not passionate, you won't get in. I'll, I'll be honest. Um, I think passion is one of the most important things you can bring to the table when you're applying to a lot of graduate schemes because they aren't expecting you to be experts in the industry. Um, they're expecting you to be passionate um, to learn about the industry. Um, so if you're not interested in learning, um, I would kind of consider alternative options as, as blunt as that sounds. Um, and number two, you can start your learning early. So if you get through to the interview stage, why not spend a little bit of time um, learning about some of the Microsoft stuff? There are courses on LinkedIn Learning, Linda, Plural Site, YouTube, whatever you have access to, watch a couple of videos. Um, you by no means need to be an expert, but if you can come and just talk about it a little bit, you know, the elevator pitch, um, it's gonna really help you. And I will drop a link to a free YouTube channel in the chat window called Office Mechanics, which um, goes through some kind of technical stuff that you might find interesting. Thank you, Jordan. Um, Matthew, over to you, please. Yeah, uh, I'll go more of a technical aspects. Uh, everyone here mentioned all of the aspects of how to apply and some of the key skills that you can need in the industry are related to containers. So it would be a good idea if you guys start looking at things like Dockers, Kubernetes, everything that allows you to load the application quickly without of having set up the system prior. Uh, things like working from home uh, with the current nature of environment, you guys would need to know things like, for example, using Teams, like the colleagues over there, and being able to collaborate you work remotely with other people. And all of those small things would basically allow you in future to work more effectively in, in the current environment. So yeah. Docker, Thank Kubernetes, and working from home. Cool. Thank you, Matthew. Um, Christina, please. Gosh, there's so many good things you said. Um, so we actually have, um, um, I'm going to reiterate um, just the importance of projects, and I'm going to sound like a, a broken record, but we are talking about technical fields. Um, I think there are, as a, at least for our organization, we do. Unfortunately, we do require some uh, demonstration that you uh, have ability and interest in tech. Um, there is really not much excuse to not have any projects. You know, there's you can build a website um, just for fun. Um, there are many places, Kaggle, you can go to Kaggle for 
data science related stuff or data related stuff, uh, top coder has software uh, engineer related stuff, build an app, um, and have that on the CV. Because I think that just, it, because it's a competitive job market, I just feel um, that would really make you stand out. One of the questions, you know, what makes you stand out? Um, we do have on our blog, um, if you go to our website and click Medium, which is our blog, um, we do have a top five tips. Um, I want to go through it and have a look on the website. Thank you so much, Christina. I think we have lost Meron. I can't seem to find him in, in our list. Uh, but thank you to everyone. Uh, like I said, this, this is hopefully recorded because we, we tried, my colleague Clementa has tried recording the session, so it will be available for you all to watch later on as well. Uh, but thank you for such great information from all the, the, the presenters on the panel today. And like I said, if any questions, I think they have given some of the, them have given their details to connect, or you can just send me your uh, questions or queries and I will try to pass them to the relevant presenter. Thank you. And thank you for organizing. Thank you all. Welcome. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.